Hey folks, it's Tommy Frugal Prepper. So, um, a little bit different video. Um, I'm just putting this out on YouTube to help other people, mostly. Nothing to do with prepping, but um, I'm a network engineer. Um, I've been a network engineer. Well, I don't know when I became stopped becoming a, a PC technician and started becoming a network engineer. I guess probably around 93, 94. Uh, mostly back then working with DenNet and Novell Networks, and I eventually got my CNA, Certified Novell Administrator, then Certified Novell Engineer. Um, I've had so many certs over the years, I don't really know. From Citrix to Microsoft to Novell to um, uh, a whole bunch of like Proxim Wi-Fi certifications, uh, 3Com certifications, I've done IP phone systems um, with 3Com, I've also done some Asterix IP IP phone systems. Um, in my current job, I'm now learning the Cisco IP phones. Um, so, um, done a lot of stuff over the years. But uh, right now, I'm working towards getting my CCMP. I'm currently studying for my CCMP route uh, exam. So, I've had a CCNA since about 2002. Um, now, it's expired in times over there, but I just took both my tests and got it current again for my CCNA, and I passed my last test here about, I don't know, six, eight months ago. Um, and so, um, now I'm working my way through my CCNP route uh, book and trying to get prepared to take that test. And, um, see, back in, I don't know, I think 2006, I did pa pass two of my tests for my CCNP. There was four tests back then. I passed my switching and my routing, um, but I'm finding that there's a lot more in the CCMP route now than there was back then. Um, you know, it just skimmed some BGP stuff, and now there's a lot more BGP, um, which is what, we, it's a border gateway protocol. And that's been a little bit of a challenge. I've had to break down in small pieces and just group through the labs over and over and really learn it. Um, now there's a lot of virtual uh, software and labs out there. Um, a lot of people will tell you like, oh, use GNS3. Now GNS3 is great. Um, you'll have to find the software. You'll have to find the iOSs that you need. It requires very specific ones. There's a lot of good videos out there on how to set that up. And I do use that when I need to build a quick simple network to do something right on my laptop. The problem is, is that GN3 does not do switches, it only does some routers. So if you need a switch to hook some of this stuff together in your lab, uh, GN3 is not going to work so well for you. I think GN3 would be plenty probably for doing a CCNA, um, but when you get to CCMP level, you're going to need something a little better. And then Cisco makes a program called Packet Tracer. Do some research, there is a way to sign up for a free account and download that program for free. Um, and um, it works fairly well, but it does some odd things. Um, some things with Frame Relay and OSPF just cannot get to work right in Packet Tracer. And as long as that program's been out, I'm surprised Cisco hasn't fixed that yet, but they haven't, even in the latest versions that I've tried. Um, there are some you know, newer virtual labs and software that work absolutely great, and I think that's wonderful, but there's no substitute for getting your hands on the real equipment and really doing things for yourself. I just think that's still the best way to go. Now obviously if you get to CCIE level you can do a lot of this stuff um, on your home lab but you're not going to have access to Nexus cores and, and, and things like that um, to experiment and play with so you probably are going to have to do like Cisco's uh, virtual uh, lab environment and pay for that kind of stuff. Um, but I got access to a lot of these routers for free that were given to me, all the 2600 series routers. Um, I have some more behind me, but I've got one, two, three, four 2600s in here. Uh, I got a couple 2800s in the bottom. Let me go ahead and move this camera down so that you can see a little better. Um, so, um, what we have is a couple 2800s. This bottom 2800 here is actually set up as my frame relay switch. Um, and then this is route, you know, what I call router 1, router 2, router 3, router 4, and router 5. I got a couple switches in between if I need to hook routers together. I'll put more switches in this stack when I'm doing my CCMP switch. 
but for route this has been sufficient and um, also if you need to separate these and you only have one router or whatever you can create VLANs on these and separate them logically within the switch um, a couple things that I want to say that I think will save you money um, one is um, a lot of people will say get the DCE serial cards and then the special cables um, for working in a lab environment and those are great but what I did is I got T1 cards okay um, and uh, some of these had T1 cards in them some of my bot you know on these 2800s they require a version 2 T1 card on your 2600s your older routers that require a version 1 they will not interchange so be aware of that but you can literally get these cards for a couple dollars a piece on eBay especially if you buy them in bulk um, and um, then you can build what is a T1 crossover cable, which is where you just take, you know, pins 1 and 2, goes to 4 and 5, and pins 4 and 5 go to 1 and 2 on this end. You plug that in, and you have a link between them. Um, you can simulate frame relay switching on a router. Um, there's a good video for that. I'll put a link to it down below. And then that router can be your frame relay switch. And if you need to, you can have like three of the Wix doing a frame relay switch and still use the Ethernet ports and do routing on it as well. It's completely independent of the switching. Um, so you can still use that frame relay switch as a router in your lab if you're more limited on routers. Um, so I guess that's one thing is get T1 Wix. Don't worry about those serial cards. I really haven't found a need to have the serial cards T1 wigs with a crossover cable work great. Um, the other thing is this Moxa terminal server. Now uh, you can plug into the console port on each of these with an adapter that goes to your laptop. Uh, but it's nice to be able to work remotely from your laptop. So these uh, Moxa uh, terminal servers are available on eBay really, really cheap. Um, and then uh, the special cable I figured out the pin out for you take that to your console port and then you can telnet into this guy and hit each of these ports and you're on the console port of the router which is important because if you connect to it with telnet directly to the router and then you change the networking around um, you might lose connectivity to that router so you really need to be on the console port this just plugs into my home network. I hit these console ports. I can configure all this stuff any way I need to, no matter what interfaces I take down or up or anything. Um, and then, you know, crimp yourself up a bunch of uh, cables. You know, I have my yellow ones are my T1 crossover cables. My blue ones with a black piece on them are just Ethernet crossovers for going directly between a router Ethernet to router Ethernet. And then I got just some straight through Cat5 cables. I have have all different uh, kinds of lengths and stuff up here for everything. So that I can hook that up. Um, just get you a set of crimpers and a big bag of these RJ45 connectors on eBay. You can get a whole little kit with like 100 connectors for, you know, 12 or 13 bucks free shipping. And then that's good because you're going to learn how to crimp Ethernet cables really well, which is something you'll probably never do in real life because you'll buy them. But if you need to make a custom cable in a hurry, it's always good to have a set of crimpers handy. It's been my experience. Um, so that's basically what I'm doing. I got 2600 routers here. Um, see this switch, Cisco switch, this is an old uh, 2950, only a layer 2 switch. This is a 3560. Um, if you can get 3560s, not 3550s, is that right? Or is it 3650? Let me look here. Yeah, 3560. Um, this has the ability when you get into some more advanced studies um, of being able to make uh, ports in a VLAN only talk to certain other ports or being able to talk out one port but not to each other. Um, that might be more CCIE level, but like I said, I'm, I'm doing my CCMP now. I don't know if I'll ever do CCIE, but if I do, that 3560 is a better switch to have than a 50 for the few more dollars that it costs. Um, I got all this equipment like used on eBay, and then the 2600s were given to me um, in that 2950 here was given to me. Um, then the two more 2600s and the two 2800s on the bottom 
Behind me I have some more 3500 series switches, some more 2600 series routers, and a couple more 2800 series routers as well. Um, also you're probably going to need to you know get some IOS's. You're going to want the um, advanced IP services or advanced enterprise IOS uh, for most of the stuff that you'll be doing. IP base won't do it all, especially on the switches. You're going to want the advanced IP services so you can do all your layer 3 routing on switches that are capable of layer 3. Um, Cisco won't just give you these IOS's and let you download them for free. They're licensed products. Um, what I'd recommend is if you can, find a friend or find a CCIE and make them your friend or find a CCIE and ask them. Um, and they can help you out with a lot of those IOS's. Also, as you buy these on eBay, you'll find like, oh, this one came with a good IOS. And if you did, if you stick with the same model for your other stuff, you'll be able to copy that IOS onto the other ones um, and be able to get what you need. Um, so yeah, this is kind of what I'm doing. Like I said, I have more. Uh, the one lab I'm doing for BGP requires me to have nine routers and three switches, and I have just enough to do that. Um, but I'm not to that lab yet. Um, my book that I really like is uh, this uh, CCMP Success Series uh, Study Guide. This is by uh, Chris Bryant. Um, he has a complete video series that mirrors this book, and you can get it like really affordably. This book is like 30 or 40 bucks, and then the video series I got like on a sale sometime for the whole CCMP video series was like 40 bucks. Free updates forever on the videos. Um, you can download them and watch them offline. You can watch them right from the website. Um, it's been excellent. Uh, the, the video and this together is excellent. Um, I found for my CCNA that I still needed to uh, get some really good practice questions and really go through it. Um, this uh, book will definitely teach you how to do the job in the real world, uh, but it, you'll find that you'll missing some things when it comes to take the exam that Cisco would like you to have memorized for no real reason other than to make the test tricky. Because um, so many people get their brain dumps and cheat on them now, they've made the test really hard. But this gives you a lot of practical knowledge to learn what you need to learn and the real commands and do it, you know, work these labs forwards and backwards and forwards again in here and um, you will actually become very proficient um, using this book with doing the actual work because it's not just about passing the cert, it's about actually being able to do it once you get a job for doing CCMP level stuff, actually knowing what's going on. There's a lot of paper Cisco certified people walking around out there that have no experience and have memorized some brain dumps and passed the test. But you want to be able to stand out and actually be able to do the work um, and be good at it. Be able to pass a technical interview. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Um, just thought I would share some of what I'm doing for my CCMP lab. If you're just doing CCNA, you can probably use GNS for a lot of it. Yeah, but at the very least, you'd want a couple of at least layer 2 switches. And probably three routers would be best for CCNA, but you could get by with two if you had to. Um, the th I say three because you'd really be ideal to have like three routers, uh, three wicks in one of them. Um, really four wicks in that one to be able to build like a frame relay. Although you could just build a frame to two routers. I guess that'd be okay. Um, but, uh, you know, frame relays covered pretty heavy on the CCNA still, even though I'm seeing less and less and less frame relay in the real world anymore. It's all MPLS. <coughs> it's all fiber. T1s are becoming a thing of yesteryear very quick, which is why you can get these T1 wicks so cheap, which works out well for being able to study. So, that's all I got, folks. Um, like I said, um, I'll show you real quick here. Here's my other switches over here. Um, I got the 20, there's a 2800 on top, two 3500 series switches, and a couple 2600s on the bottom. Um, just collect that stuff up on eBay. It's getting really cheap now. 
Um, also, check out Gov Deals. Um, a lot of government organizations are auctioning their stuff off cheap. It's also a good place to get some of this stuff. Anyway, that's it for now, folks. This is Tom, your free will prepper, and I will talk to you all later.